Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And if you've been an entrepreneur for five minutes or more, <laughs> then you know that we face challenges on a regular basis, right? We face multiple challenges as entrepreneurs. One of the challenges maybe is the fact that we are an entrepreneur and we can't help ourselves. You know, you know who you are, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or whether you're not, you know, if you've got that deep seated root to just do things yourself and to have your own business and something to call your own and you're willing to work on that and you don't need a boss telling you what to do and how to do it and what to be responsible for and what you should care about. Okay. I mean, it doesn't mean we don't all get off track on those things, but you know when you're an entrepreneur, you know when you just kind of got to do things your own way and you're okay with some things going wrong and you're okay with risk and you're okay with shouldering the responsibility of being an entrepreneur because that means that you are the innovator, you are the leader, you are the thinker. That doesn't mean you're the CEO, chief everything officer, CEO doesn't mean you have to wear all the hats and play all the roles, but you know, when you're an entrepreneur, you just can't help yourself. So my entrepreneur friends, how do you stay motivated? How do you stay moving? How do you stay on top of things? It's really, really important because we're going to face challenges, right? We face challenges, a pandemic, inflation, rising costs, wars and supply chain issues and changing landscapes all the time. We have natural disasters. Life gives us challenges. And there's lots of challenges faced by entrepreneurs. You know, you are the catch all end all. You are the boss. You are the head one in charge, which means that things pass or fail depends on you, right? And your team that you're building. So that's some of the challenges that we face is learning how to manage our time, manage our money and keep all the balls in the air and what to work on first and how to prioritize our time. So it's really important to stay motivated while we're on this journey, while we're walking the entrepreneurial journey, whether you are an Amazon seller or you're creating your own products and making your own products and doing goods and services, or maybe you still listen to this and you're doing none of those. And that's okay too. Maybe you're doing something completely different or thinking about doing something completely different. You're still, if you're still an entrepreneur, you're going to hit challenges and you're going to need to stay motivated, especially if a honeymoon phase waves, wears off and at the beginning when we're excited and we're going for it and we're learning everything we need to learn and we're having some small successes. Those are when we can stay motivated. It's during the trenches, during the hard times when we're walking through the fire that it's hard to stay motivated but it's hard to stay on top of the journey. So I have some five key things that we're going to go through to kind of help you when you're struggling to lack motivation or, or, or there's just challenges and hardships and it's really kind of weighing on what you quote unquote feel like doing, right? That's part of motivation, right? It's that feeling. It's a feeling. It's, you know, you've got, you've got a drive, you've got an ambition, you've got a motivator, a carrot dangling in front of your face. Well, let's talk about that. What is that carrot? What is that purpose and that vision? I think when we're down in the dumps or we have a lot of challenges, which lately Amazon has been throwing us lots of challenges from all over the place, you know, new laws and everything that's been implementing in the government realm has then now come down on Amazon and they said you have to change some of these things and you have to inform the customers better. And then there's like more compliance documents and, you know, different questions Amazon's asking along the way. And it can be very frustrating. It can feel like an endless loop of craziness. This is when we have to grab onto our vision and our purpose. Y'all, this is something everyone forgets on a day-to-day -day basis. We're, we're just going through it. We're trying to fix listings. Maybe we got an IP claim. Maybe we're on a back order or Amazon won't approve our brand or just all kinds of different hardships or somebody jumped on your listing or someone left you a bad review. All the negative things that can kind of happen. Sometimes we have to just take five minutes and say, why am I doing this? Why am I doing what I'm doing? What is what am I trying to accomplish in this? Is this even worth the headache? Yeah, these are tough questions, guys. 
They are. But if you want to stay motivated, if you're lackluster in your motivation for your business and you're seeing a lot of problems and not a lot of solutions and not a lot of hope, you got to reevaluate and you got to ask at least this question, why am I doing this? What is the bigger picture of why you started this business? You started a business. It's not just a little side hustle, something. There's something that motivated you to press that button to listen to this podcast, to listen to Amazon files, to watch the videos, to learn the thing. What was the bigger picture? I don't care if that was five minutes ago or five years ago or a decade ago. Why did you do what you're doing? And be honest with yourself because no one's looking. No one's looking over at your paper and gonna judge you for why you started. Maybe it's because you're like, you know what? Maybe this is the ship that will finally come in. This is finally my pay dirt. Maybe you've tried 1,400 other things in the past 14 months. <laughs> and this is just your next thing that you think is going to be the thing. The thing to what? To what? What is your motivation? Why did you start this? Do you just really want a big windfall and pay dirt and it's like a, a lottery, but you know you kind of have to work at it? Like, be honest with yourself. Why you started your business? Why did you, or if you're just dabbling, why are you dabbling? What's that reason? What's that vision? What's that purpose? What do you hope to do with your business someday? And honestly, this can be some of the hardest things that people answer because on the surfacey thing, the surface is like, okay, well, I was hoping maybe to pay for dance for my daughter. You know, it's thousands of dollars a year and, you know, our regular budget is just kind of tied up and this is a little bit extra and I want her to be able to do it. So I want to earn some extra money to do that. That could be your story. It could be, I absolutely hate my nine to five and I am willing and motivated to do anything I can to try to replace my income because I hate my job. I want to know I've heard about working from home and remotely and I've heard about this and this is what I want to do or a client of mine who is seeking to retire shortly but he wants something to build and something to fiddle with because he doesn't want he wants to retire from his profession but he doesn't want to retire from life and his motivation isn't really money. His motivation is progress and something to do and something that's all his own that he can care for and watch grow and water and feed it. He's not in a hurry, which makes it amazing to work with him because he's willing to slow down and take time and take the steps, but not sit on his hands, take consistent steps. What's your motivation? This isn't money. It'd be like, oh, I'm looking for my ship to come in here and this is going to be the thing. No, it's just something he also said maybe wants to leave a legacy with this. Maybe something he can teach and pass down to a grandchild, perhaps. Who knows? Motivation has to come from somewhere. What's motivating you? What motivated you to begin with? And is, still, is that still a thing? It comes from our sense of purpose or drive to make a difference. Motivation comes from a drive to make a difference. So what kind of difference are you trying to make? Is it in your life? The life of your kids? Your future? Your health? Like, what kind of difference are you making? Are you wanting to create products that solve problems because there's big problems in the world? Like what motivates you? I know some people who've created products because they were so sick of the, the stuff that was on the market that wasn't meeting their needs. So they decided to create the products that were gonna meet their needs and then serve the world by, by providing that product, making a difference in people's lives, consumers' lives. They motivated by creating a product that's going to help people. That's their motivation. Because who, if, if they're not going to do it, who's going to do it? What's your sense of purpose? What is the reason you're running a business? And has that changed over time? And guess what? That's okay. That's awesome. 
You know, when some people say you've changed or this has changed, thank God. I mean, do you really want everything to always stay the same? We're scared of change. But then when it's forced on us, we're like, oh, wow, look at the things that we didn't know that we know now. Things can be different. Things can be great different. And things can be bad different. But is your vision and your purpose the same as it was before? And if it's not, what is your purpose? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you running a business? Why, what is it that you enjoy out of it? What are you getting from it? And is that still what you want to get from it? Do you want more from it? So maybe you craft a mission statement. Okay, y'all, so you know I went through 10KSB, uh, the 10,000 Small Businesses Program, uh, Goldman Sachs. I recommend the program if it's in your area. Um, I actually met some awesome, amazing people there that I hope to stay in touch with forever. We are trying to meet once a month at least. And uh, But I learned a lot. And one of the things they forced us to do as part of this program was draft a mission statement for our companies. Draft a mission statement. Why are, what, what do you exist to do? Why are you doing it? What is your mission? And then we wrote our mission statements and then it went through like four or five rounds and drafts of feedback and people having questions and saying, this isn't clear to me. I don't understand what you do and who you do it for. Revise, redraft. So your mission can be refined still. What do you want it to be? You're an entrepreneur. What is your mission of your Amazon business? Now, I hear the eye rolls, right? Some people are like, oh gosh, this is woo woo. And this is like deep dive and whatever. I don't care. This is stuff no one wants to address. You're like, okay, fix my IP, fix my listing, whatever. Deep down, let me ask you, ladies and gentlemen, because I know that my listenership is at least 50, 50 women, men. I'm talking to all y'all. Gentlemen, what motivates you to run an Amazon business? And don't just say, oh, it's just a way to make money. Why do you want to make money? You got a family to support? You got goals and dreams? Are you pursuing those? Is your life in balance? What is your mission and your purpose? And why do you want that? There's no judgment here, by the way. There's no guilt or shame in these things. They're just questions. For you to ask yourself, don't put shoulda, woulda, coulda on you or don't put any shame or guilt about what you want and why. Just discover it. I think a lot of people just won't. They won't look inside for even five minutes and say, okay, set a timer. I mean, like you don't have to get all into your feelings all the time, but for a minute, why do you want what you want? You have something to prove them, be honest. Be like, yeah, because my little brother said I was a POS and sorry, this is a family show. So I'm trying to keep it clean here. But, you know, your motivation could be like because people told me my whole life I couldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna. I'm never going to make it. And so you've got something to prove. Maybe to them. Maybe to you. Be honest about it. You don't have to tell me. Be honest with yourself. Why? Because you're the only one losing if you don't. You're the only one losing if you're not honest with yourself. And there's no judgments here, no shame. I'm not going to put in guilt and shame on you and tell you shoulda, woulda, coulda, or, or, you know, look down upon you. I just want to say, hey, be honest with yourself. And then ask yourself the next question. How's that working out for you? So if you're motivated by proving everyone else wrong, that's fine. How's it working for you? Is it keeping you motivated? Because if not, what is your purpose and your vision? You want to succeed better yet to show the someone else that's going to come up again that their sister, mother, brother, cousin, husband, blah, 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 whatever told them they couldn't, wouldn't, shouldn't, and you're never going to be anything because someone else is going to experience that again in life too. So if that's your motivation, own it, but then work with it. Let it motivate you. Remember and remind yourself of why. Remind yourself of why. I can make it because I choose to do the work. Is I choose to do the things that other people won't do. Okay? Revisit your vision and your mission or create one if you have it. And whatever it is, just own it. Be okay with it. You don't have to share it. Like I said, this isn't, this isn't uh, you know, group circle time where you have to tell everybody what your motivation is. It could simply be vanity. And if that's what it is for you, great. Just make sure it's still working for you. Make sure that's still what you want and what you're chasing. And why are you chasing it? 
those are just important things for you to know. Revisit it, especially during the challenging times, because that's gonna where the rubber meets the road. You just want more money or just want everything to go smoothly and peacefully, because guess what? Life is short and full of trouble. And whether you jump this ship to the next to the next, there's still ships and ships still have problems, right? So it's what, what, what kind of hard do you want to exchange for another hard, right? Know thyself. This is how you do it. All right, moving on. The next key to staying motivated is to set short and long-term goals. Set those goals. Breaking down your tasks, your objectives into actionable steps. Y'all, do you have dream big, step small? There's this book called Dream Big, Step Small. And it talks about a lot of these things and it helps you create this, your own personal roadmap to getting exactly what you want. Small steps at a time. Like literally, you don't get from zero to a million dollars overnight. Small, con small, consistent steps get you closer. And then you find that you're closer than you ever thought. But you got to have the small steps, both small and big, breaking those things down into actionable steps. If you get overwhelmed easily, don't set a five-year plan. You're just setting yourself up for failure. If you're a big planner and you love to see this big picture and all these details, that's great too. Make sure you're reasonable. Setting short and long-term goals provides you with the clarity you need to make the next choice. Look, all the fires are burning around us, right? Everyone, everything seems like 911, but it's not. It's not. I'm here to tell you, not everything's 911. If your house is burning down, it's 911. It's time to take action. But what do you do? Then you've got all this stuff that you love and treasure. What do you save first? The people and the pets, right? <laughs> the living beings are what you take care of first, right? So if you're thinking about your house burning down, and the things that you would get. And if you had this much time, then you would do that. Do the same thing for your business. Right now, the house is burning in some area. Let's be real. Something needs your immediate attention. Find out what that is, AKA the people and the pets, right? The living beings, the things that need the most attention come first. And then if you can save the valuables, the keepsakes, you get those. And then if you can save something else, then what else are you going to grab? So that becomes your house is on fire to you have 15 minutes to vacate and you can grab whatever you need and whatever you can fit and whatever you can carry in 15 minutes in your vehicle. Okay. Those are two different priorities, right? Same thing for your business, short and long-term goals. What needs your attention right now today? in the coming weeks. And then that you don't have to have every little detail spelled out. Although that's some of you. And I would challenge you to maybe bring it in. And for those who are just like willy nilly, eh, I don't want to think about five years, I want to just think about five minutes, you need to have a farther plan. So y'all meet me in the middle. If you're your super duper extra plan, and you can literally show me in a spreadsheet your next 10 years, rein it in a little, just a little, I'm not asking you to be a different person. I'm asking you to be like, okay, we don't have to be so regimented. Things are going to change. How many times have your plan derailed and then you had to rip it out and start over, right? But then all those willy-nilly, oh, I'll just figure it out as I go along. How's that working out for you too? So you don't have a plan, you don't know what to do, and then you get overwhelmed easy because you're like, well, I have all these things and I know kind of what I need to do, but I don't know where and what order. We need to come together. Short and long-term goals. They provide you with clarity of what to do next and purpose. They're based on your purpose. It gives you the roadmap to the next place you're going. Build your roadmap. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out and all over the place. You can just be like, hey, guess what? So I had a goal. I don't know if you guys know about this summer. This summer I, I co-hosted a, a flips challenge with my buddy, Chris Green. Flips meaning getting stuff from yard sales, estate sales and thrift stores and flipping them on eBay or Amazon Marketplace or other marketplaces other than Amazon. Although I did use some stuff for Amazon, I'll only brand new things anyway. Um, and we did this 10 week flip challenge, right? Um, and that kind of forced me to, to do some things. But then I found out that there's an amazing VA um, out there that likes to do eBay stuff. And I, I go so far as to do some pictures and some things. And then she does the rest, list it and then cross list it and all this kind of stuff. So I'm like, okay, but she only starts with like at a certain level. So I'm like, okay, I have to and remember eBay is like my side, side, side hustle. 
I love doing it. I love teaching it. And I love the thrill of the hunt. So I have to have somewhere that I can sell these treasures that I can't help but collect. <laughs> Otherwise, my house would look like hoarders and uh, I might be booted out me and my stuff. So that's my outlet for that. I love to do it. It's something it's like more passionate for me. So I have a purpose in that. My purpose is I get to sell some stuff online, uh, but I also get to make that profit and teach a little bit about it and talk a little bit about it and keep myself relevant in the eBay and, and Poshmark and all the other stuff, right? Uh, it's not really my, my primary, but it's something I really enjoy. That's my purpose and my plan. So I created this goal. I'm like, okay, in order to hire the VA and justify that cost, I have to have at least 100 items listed. And then I have to plan after that. I have to keep her busy. This is how she's paid. And so how many listings can I do? I mean, not listings, what I need to do with my, my part versus hers. So I'm paying her a specific amount for the listings that she's creating, but I have to do a lot of the work up front, you know, which is great because then I outsource the stuff that I don't, the part that I don't like, the research, the keyword research, the stuff like that. I do the picture stuff. Anyway, long story short with that, setting that short-term goal. My long-term goal is to be able to completely outsource my eBay style, my thrifting, my flips, not my non-Amazon store. Like I have my Amazon store, my wholesale bundles that I sell. And that's like my bread and butter. That's like my main income stream. And so I am I pay a lot of attention to that. Um, but this is another just income stream that's just like just fun for me. I, it's an outlet for me. It's it's also makes money. So it's great, but I can't do all the things. So my goal there is to have that mostly automated so that all I'm doing is picking up the treasures and finding them. And then there's someone to do all the rest but i have to start one thing at a time i had an ebay person for a long time and um she had moved on to other things and then my ebay kind of just went fizzled because i don't have time to do it all myself so all that to say hey, setting up the roadmap to my success i have to know where i'm going the long-term goal is to only be able to do the thrifting part the part that i love the most where i go out and look at things and i find the treasures and then the outsourcing is everything else, including pictures and fulfillment and listing and everything else. I just want to buy it. And then I know I want to know when it's sold. That's what I want to do. I want to repurpose these treasures and bring them in and move them around the world based on who, who people want them. So that's, that's my, my short term goal was to get to 100 listings. And then my other short term goal is to do 15 listings per week that's a reasonable amount to get there so if that's the short term and long term where are you going and why first of all is the why are you going there why do you want this thing if you want this thing how are you going to get there small set short term and long term when i say long term i mean short terms like what do you need to do this week this month and year like what do, what do you want this to look like a year from now like if you could fast forward and in the in dream dig step small the book we cover um you're in a perfect world it helping you figure out where you want to go and why. So if you have no idea what your vision and your purpose is, get the book. It's on Audible, it's on Amazon. I have copies here, I will mail you one. Um, figure out where you're going and then set short and long-term goals to get there. Celebrate the small victories and use SMART goals. SMART goal framework. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time-bound. But guess what? Don't jump ahead because you know what? Next week, we're going to talk about smart goals and how you can kind of set them for your business. So stay tuned to the next episode. Um, we're going to talk about smart goals because some of you guys have said, how do you set your goals? What do you do? Like, I, I don't know. So we're going to talk about that. But celebrating small victories along the way. You have made many milestones. You probably aren't looking back to look at them. Y'all, this doesn't have to be a whole day or a whole afternoon or even a whole hour of doing that. Just flip through your Facebook. If you're a Facebooker, I guess, you know, you, you usually put all the victories and all the celebrations and everything like that on there. So pat yourself on the back just one time a day. What's something good that you did? Where are you now that you weren't a year ago? Are you a more peaceful person? You have a little bit more money. You have a little bit less stress. You have a little bit more know-how. Have you learned something new? And if you've been standing still for a year, maybe this is the time to move. Adjust your goals to align with your needs and your own personal vision, which changes regularly. Give yourself permission to do that. But back it up with your accountability and reasons why. It's not because you just don't feel like it or making a bunch of excuses. It's because, hey, stick your stake in the ground. Decide. 
and then own it. You're like, yeah, I'm ready to make a change. I thought this was going to be the best path for me, and it turns out I hate it. Just be ready to give an account for yourself, to yourself, not to everybody. But a lot of times we hold ourselves back because we're worried that someone's going to ask, oh, whatever happened to your Amazon store? And you're like, oh, well, just like everything else I've done, I just let it go to the wayside and I just, you know, it was too hard and blah, blah, blah. No, just be like, you know what? I tried that for a time and it just really wasn't for me. I didn't enjoy a lot of the aspects of it. And so I moved on to other things. What's so hard about that? That could be it. It could also be like, oh, you know what? I'm still really working on that. There's a lot to learn and I've come a long way, but there's still a lot to learn. So I'm continuing to learn and I'm continuing to grow my business. Either way works. Set those goals and walk towards them. The third thing, surround yourself with a supportive community. Now, this is where I'm going to get a little frustrated and just be honest. A supportive community is not necessarily a Facebook group. I love Facebook groups and they have purpose and it's a great way to ask questions and all that kind of stuff. But supportive is relative. I've been in a lot of Facebook groups that are nothing at all like support looks like. However, you also can't expect everybody to hold your hand and do all the things for you and let you go to a place that you whine and cry and complain and then they solve all your problems for you. Okay, number one, you're grown. You have Google or Siri or ChatGPT or something. Before you go to your supportive community, I'm going to suggest that you try a solution first. Try a blog, try learning something, try Googling it, okay? Because the supportive community can help for something specific, but also try to solve your own problem first because then you might actually have something to contribute to them as well, right? A supportive community, surrounding yourself with like-minded individuals, people that understand what you're going through. <coughs> Excuse me. People who understand what you're going through. They're Amazon sellers, yes. They understand, they speak the language, they know what you're talking about. The importance of having a supportive community, and it depends on what kind of person you are too. I understand that not everybody wants to be shoulder to shoulder with people and maybe you're more introverted and so social media is helpful for you because you don't have to look people in the eye and be live and be awkward and whatever. I don't know. Um, this is just things I've heard from, from other people. Um, clearly, I'm not afraid to be in front of the camera or the microphone or share my ideas and thoughts in the public setting. So I, I sometimes have a hard time relating to that. However, I'm also a very independent and I'm a very independent person. I, I don't mind being alone and being by myself and doing my own thing, but I'm also a people person. I'm extroverted for sure. And some people are introverted and that is totally just fine. But a supportive community, what does that look like to you? Do you feel supported? And what are your expectations of a community? And what are you willing to contribute? Because a lot of times people want to be in a community, but they want to get, get, get and not give, give, give. It's a give and take. Some people need face to face one on one or, or a group setting where they actually talk to real people. If that's you, join a meetup. Look, a meetup dot com or meetup.org or whatever it is and find a local entrepreneur group or a your chamber of commerce or something somewhere there's free meetings you don't have to pay a lot of pay any money somewhere where you can get with like-minded individuals and just talk or just listen some people are just shy and they want to just listen so get in those get involved in those things sharing experiences collective problem solving requires participation. It doesn't mean that you're always just going to ask, 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 and have everybody give you all the things, but you're asking, you're giving, you're giving input. Seek out mentors and coaches. You guys have heard of SCORE? SCORE.org is retired. Um, I always say it wrong. I think the SCORE is like an acronym and I don't remember what it is, but it's retired business executives and entrepreneurs 
who are just there to be mentors in different areas of business for free. There is SCORE near you. So SCORE.org. I think it's .org. Um, go look it up. Find a business mentor or a coach. Maybe you have some financial questions. There are people that are willing to help for free to just get you through some business stuff. Yeah, it, it might not be Amazon specific, not coaching an actual like, here's what to do and here's a plan and a consultant and a strategist, but someone that can mentor you along the way, someone you can talk to be like, oh, this entrepreneur stuff is hard. Resources, things that are available that you didn't know you had. Participate in the discussion. Join online workshops and conferences and seminars, and, but don't just learn yourself to death. Some people learn themselves out of business. You can't constantly, I mean, I, we want you to embrace continuous learning. And that's actually my number four point here. We are going to embrace additional learning, but learning has to come with action. It has to come with action. Join these things, get plugged into something, something that helps you. If you're introverted and you don't like a whole lot of people, then do something online that you can watch and be a part of the discussion in the background. Something that you don't have to be on camera for or in person for. I mean, there's a lot that, I mean, that's great. Y'all, I'm wearing sweatpants. <laughs> you can't see that in here with my mullet outfit, I call it, you know, like business on top, right? Um, but seriously, thank goodness for Zoom because there's a lot of, it solves a lot of problems. Either way, get connected. Be vulnerable enough to ask for help because you can't do it all. CEO does not mean chief everything officer. Surround yourself with people who get it and then be humble enough to ask, hey, what do you do about this? I am in a, what we call a CEO council every single week. The same five or six of us. I mean, there's these six of us and we're you know consistent every single week at the same time get together and someone's in the hot seat and we talk about these things and we we encourage one another and we talk about the problems. We say, okay, what did you guys do about this? Or I have to fire someone and I don't know how, or um, I had somebody quit and I don't know how to do this. Or, you know, my financial advisor embezzled money from me. And, you know, who knows? Like we, there's so many different problems that can happen in business. Having a group of people that are like-minded that aren't competing against one another, that aren't worried uh, about stealing each other's ideas, but really are there to input into people's lives each other's lives be present in that seek it out and i don't mean just on facebook groups i mean in real life and it doesn't have to cost a lot of money or a million dollars or whatever it might be have some investment of time or energy to know you're serious you know I'm not gonna lie coaches and business and mentors are on score they're free um but if you wanted something more in your niche it might be a little extra it might be a monthly group of some sort whatever I wish we could all gather in person once a month. That would be amazing. I'm an in-person person. <laughs> I love in-person more than anything else. Like, I don't know, I just feel people's energy and I just, I don't know, that's my thing. Um, so I miss people and I wanna have people in person learn. But anyway, that might not be you, whatever it is. Get into a community, be vulnerable enough to just put yourself out there to get some help. Give and receive, okay. Number four, key to staying motivated is learning, adopting a growth mindset and staying updated. That doesn't mean you don't have to know all the things about all the things. Don't chase all the shiny objects. That's not what I'm saying. Continuous learning, meaning what have you already invested in? Learn one new thing about that. Y'all, merchant words. They have so many tools. Even though I love and favor the classic search because it's so straight up. That's what I love about it. It's straight up. If you type in the word monkey, it's going to give you monkey plus all the related other everything and just the number of people searching for that item in any given 30 days on Amazon. They can't be more straightforward than that. It's a great tool. But did you know they have like 10 or 15 other tools? Continuous learning stays motivated. Learn something new. Guess what happens when you figure it out and you go ding and that light bulb goes off above your head you can't wait to try it y'all i got two words for you on merchant words keyword multiplier the end if you have merchant words go watch tutorials about keyword multiplier use it love it enjoy it just one tool 
spend 15 minutes with it and tell me you don't have some sort of aha moment you have merchant words if you don't mommyincome.com or forward slash merchant words it is my number one recommended keyword tool for the simple fact that of its simplicity and straightforwardness and knowing how to interpret it it's not complicated to say how many people are searching for this per month on amazon bam there's the the number there's not some sort of random algorithm and a bunch of other things you have to plug in and filter out in order to figure this out it can be pretty straightforward it's a user interface easy to understand but they also have other bells and whistles that are awesome but you have to learn how to use them you have to learn how to use them continuous learning adopting that growth mentality that you can grow and learn and change and that can benefit you and benefit your business but only if you implement it i know some people who i i feel like they're like zoom experts and when i say they're zoom experts because they're always on a zoom they're always watching a conference they're always going to the next live free webinar over and over and over and they learn and learn and learn and learn and then do nothing how's that working out for you i love learning too but what are you doing with it what are you doing with that education? Are you putting it into practice? Are you helping it? Is it benefiting you? Not just to know it, but to observe it and to live it. So sometimes you can overlearn because you're learning about so many different things. You can't implement all of it all at once. Learn something small and implement it and see how it works out. And then learn something new. Continuously learning helps you to overcome obstacles over time. You start to learn how to change and adapt. Give yourself some time to read books and articles and different case studies and watching different YouTube videos and actually absorbing it and watching it and slowing down and being like, wow, how can I use this information to move my business forward immediately? And put it on the list of those priorities. Remember your burning house? Your house is burning. What are those things first? What are we going to save first? What are you going to save next? What if you had extra time after that? What if you had a whole hour to clean out what you needed before you knew your house, house was going to be on fire, right? How are you going to prioritize those things? I want you to take online courses. Hello, I have written and, and lots of curriculum, tons of programs, tons, not just wholesale bundle system, which is over 50 hours of training, by the way. A wholesale bundle system is is you know the biggest thing i've ever created but i've written books and trainings and mini courses and bigger courses and revamped them i'm all about learning but i have to learn in order to teach attend online courses you guys every friday i'm continually learning as well but i'm also applying that you know remember the goldman sachs i just talked about I'm implementing that slowly, but sure, it was 14 weeks of massive, amazing training. There's no way I can implement all of that all at once. So each week, I'm implementing one small thing. Took me a week to write the mission statement. So, so, it's done. One thing at a time. Hone your skills. You can only get better. Learn from failures and keep pushing, continuous learning. And another great way to practice, the, I'm jumping ahead here. One great way to continually stay motivated is to be just a little selfish, but it's actually not selfish at all. That's just what the world wants us to think. Prioritize, yes, I said prioritize, meaning that burning house, the people first, right? You're one of the people. Prioritize self-care and well-being. How are you? Not like a, how you doing? Like a fake, like, how are you really? Physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, how are you really? A healthy entrepreneur is a motivated and effective entrepreneur. Do you take a lunch break? Do you take an afternoon break? 
I used to joke about it all the time working in a restaurant business and all these people, they would get breaks and stuff. And I would just be running around circles and doing this. I'm like, oh, because they all smoke cigarettes. So they would go outside and smoke their cigarette and have their five minute break. And I'm like, you know what? I don't smoke, but I'm going to go out there with the smokers. Why? Because I want my five minute break too. And I'm going to force myself to take one. Otherwise I'll be running around cleaning up after other people and whatever, and then find myself resentful. Because I wasn't taking it. I mean, this was many decades ago. Um, it really was decades ago. Oh my gosh. I'm really that old. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> Not going to camp there. Seriously though. So I started to be like, yeah, I'm going to take a break too. I deserve a break. Just because I don't smoke doesn't mean I'm not going to go out with the smokers and just chit chat and have a five minute break. So I did. Let me ask you as an entrepreneur. Do you take breaks during your work day? Or do you justify, oh, I work from home, so I get up a lot. I, I get up to go throw a load of laundry in and I come back in here and this and that. I'm like, no, no, no. Or I, I, I take a break. I got to go pick up the kids from the bus and then do this and that. And then I come back to my office. And okay. A break, meaning. Here's a quick example. Not a new example, but a quick example. If you've ever worked at another job, it's not entrepreneur. If you work a nine to five now, or you have before, and you are given a lunch hour, a paid lunch hour, and paid breaks during that, I hope you are, because you know if you're working a forty hour week or even a six hour day, you you get a break at least one break. That's like by law right? I don't know exactly what the rules are in all the states and everything else. But you know what I'm saying? My daughter works uh, right down the road here and she works more than 40 hours a week and she gets two 15 minute breaks and a 30 minute lunch. Ask her how many times she has skipped those breaks and those lunch hours to just do more work for the company. She doesn't. She's like, oh, it's time for my break. And even if she does nothing on her break, but scroll her phone, She's not going to sit there in that place of work and do work for those 15 minutes because that is her break time. We ask you as an entrepreneur because it's your business. You're just going to continue working through your break. You don't deserve a lunch hour. You don't deserve a brain break to watch funny cat videos or something to not have to worry about Amazon Seller Central and another IP claim or, you know, a back order or something that didn't come in or something that arrived broken or a bad review or blah, 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 fill in the blank. Self-care and well-being includes regular breaks during working hours. We live in a hustle culture where it's like, do more, be more, stay up late, get up early. Okay, that might be for a short season, but that doesn't mean you don't deserve a break, an actual break. Get up from the chair and go do something completely different. Maybe that's taking a walk. Maybe that's taking a nap. Maybe that's actually eating food at your kitchen table if you even have one. <laughs> 21st century America in 2023, how many of us sit at the dining room table and have a meal on a regular basis? Can I get an amen somewhere in the back? Y'all, I struggle. I will be fully honest. I struggle to not eat lunch right where I'm sitting right here while I'm typing and trying to remember the 1400 and different sticky notes that I have on my desk. No, the beginning I have been claiming my lunch break for this whole year. And I can't tell you how many times have I regretted that zero times have I regretted saying, Oh, no, nope, it's my lunch hour. I'm doing whatever I want on my lunch hour. It's my lunch hour. I would not work through lunch if someone else was paying me. If I was working on someone else's dime and someone else's business, I mean, this is my lunch hour. I need a break. I work from you for four hours here. I get a lunch break. I work up for four more hours. Okay, whatever. My lunch break is mine. Your lunch break is yours. Take one, plan it, have it. I don't care if you only work four hours a day. Take a break, plan it, own it, and do something different. Paint your nails, read a book, take a nap, watch ESPN, watch funny cat videos. Like, I don't know, throw some cornhole bags, throw a Frisbee walk the dog, go shopping, go to Taco Bell. Like, I don't know. Take a break. Prioritizing self-care and well-being. What makes you, <sighs> you know what that is? Taking a big deep breath, a sigh of relief, something that feels good and healthy. What is that for you? 
How long does it really take? 30 minutes. Engage in hobbies and, and creativity and things that light you on fire outside of work. Work is not life. Work is part of life and it's part of who we are. And if you're an entrepreneur, that's part of your identity even. But still, you are so many more things. What do you enjoy? Who do you enjoy? Have you listened to a new song, a new album, watched a new show? Something that you really love and look forward to? Prioritize your self-care. Why? Because when your cup is filled up, it's easily poured out on the things that, that you love and are motivating. When you feel good and healthy and right and energetic, how much more motivated are you to pour into your business that gives you benefit? Your business gives you money, right? I hope it does. Otherwise, you just have a really expensive hobby. If you're not making money back. And if you're feeling constantly stressed or overwhelmed, talk to someone. It's better now than ever. It's easier now than ever to get a mentor, a coach, uh, a therapist. I know some people are rolling their eyes. That's okay. There's tons and tons and tons of ways to be able to reach out and talk to someone to say, you know what? I'm just having a hard damn time. I need some direction. I need some clarity. I need some help. There's lots of help out there. So just circling back, fueling this fire that we have. We do have the fire, even if the fire hasn't been raging in a while. Maybe it's just like the burning coals at the bottom of the campfire. But did you know that you put one fresh spark on that and that fire blows up in a hurry? Those simmering coals that you feel like, oh, my fire's almost out. I dare you to put a paper plate on that and see what happens. <laughs> Or a really, really dry piece of pine, right? Feeling this fire, this motivation. Remember, your vision and your purpose. Set those small and long-term goals. Get the book, Dream Big, Step Small. Multiple ways. Surround yourself with supportive people. Things that actually support you. Feel like you feel supported and you want to support them. It could be a knitting club but still something that fuels you to be motivated, to be a better person, to be a happier, focused person. Next is continually learning, actionable learning, learning that you actually put into practice, continuous learning, growth mindset. I can always grow. I can always change. I can always do better. Not that you're not enough, but because you want to do better, because it's motivating to you reaching the next level, the next level of you. And finally, prioritizing self-care. Self-care that's thrown around so much. Personal well-being. Especially if you have little tiny humans to take care of, personal well-being is difficult to balance. There's just so much to do. Regular breaks. Taking time to just do something that you love. And talking to someone when you really feel stressed and overwhelmed. Maybe that's just your bestie that you call and be like, oh, let me just unload all this. You know? Whatever it is. That's how you stay motivated. Discover, redefine, revisit your purpose and your vision. Set goals to get there. Learn new things. Take care of yourself. Because what good would be a million dollar business to you if that's your goal? If you're not around to enjoy it because you've worked yourself into a heart attack for being so stressed. Every entrepreneur's journey is going to be a different path, a different road. It's okay to ask for directions here and there. It's okay to redefine where you're going. Your journey doesn't have to lead to the same destination as mine or somebody else's. And you can change the direction anytime you like. Share your tips, your experiences. Go to our Facebook group. 
if you're a student, we have a Facebook group there. You can share your stuff. If you're in the Amazon Files Hub, we share our victories and our wins every week. We talk about our challenges in the Amazon Files Hub. We talk about how to help each other. We support one another. We grow. We learn, too. But continually embrace setting those goals. And next week, we're going to talk about that, those SMART goals. We're going to talk about what it's like to set those SMART goals and how to know that you're in line with those. And it's just not some rule to follow. It is up to you to set them and do them. But I promise it will be a guiding light for you. When you know, when you sit down in that chair to do that work, you know exactly what you're doing because you're working towards a goal. When I recently set my eBay goal of doing 15 listings a week, that's very tangible. It's also very doable. It's a little bit of a challenge because I have to force myself to do it. But it's this goal I have. I want to get to a specific goal. In order to do that, it's going to require 15 listings a week. That means I have to be intentional. So we're going to talk about all those goals next week, and I want you to be there. I know you can be anywhere else doing any other thing. If you haven't subscribed already, mommyincome.com forward slash subscribe. Make sure you subscribe here on YouTube as well. And we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.